Welcome back. I hope you managed to understand asynchronous functions okay and managed to get the practical exercise done. Now we're going to move on to HTTP response codes which is an important thing to understand to make sure your web application is compliant with HTTP standards. Now a response code is basically a number that quickly allows the browser to figure out what happened with the request. Was it served correctly or was there some problem and if there was a problem what kind of problem because it doesn't always go as expected. Now there's a list of status codes that are already defined in the HTTP standard and if we have a look here from Wikipedia we can see the list of the most common ones. So the most common one of all is 200 OK and when we've created our web server both in this chapter for asynchronous and synchronous functions in the last exercise and in the first chapter we've just been defaulting to OK and this means the request went fine, nothing's wrong, all is good. And if you don't set anything in node.js it will automatically just return 200 OK and this is what you want most of the time. Now there's some other ones here but we're not going to be concerned with them in this course. The next ones we're going to be concerned with are redirection. So redirection is important uh, any 300 codes and these are used if for example you're going to redirect a user to another page. Um, now we move on to 400. 400 are ones where there's some error with the way the request was made by the, the client. So the ones we'll see in this chapter most commonly are 404 not found and you might have seen this on other websites you've used in the past and this basically means that the URL you've entered doesn't exist and that resource doesn't exist and it's a way for your site to gracefully fail if someone enters the wrong URL. The next most important one is 401 unauthorized and this basically means someone's trying to access something when they're not logged in. So later on when we create our forum app if you're trying to view a profile page and you're not logged in that will be 401 unauthorized because you don't have permission to view that. So that is one of the important codes. Another one we'll be using in this uh, course is 400 bad request and when you make a request with different parameters if the parameters are wrong then you send back 400 bad requests to tell the client that they've made the request wrong. And finally what we're going to be looking at next is 500 error codes. These are when the server, there's something wrong with the server. The one we'll use in this course is 500 internal server error and this basically is something to send back to the client when the server has some problem with it. So for example in the last exercise we saw that if you did the, the asynchronous version of file serving we just did if error throw error. But in a more mature web app that's actually publicly facing you'll probably want to send something back to the client like a 500 internal server error for example to tell them that something has gone wrong. With the example we did uh, in 2.2, then the server would just crash without sending anything back to the client and that would be very confusing and the browser might spend a long time waiting for a response never to get one and the user will be stuck waiting. So that's a way to more gracefully fail. Now we'll see all of these used when we create our first proper web app that serves multiple files as the mini project at the end of this chapter. Now we've seen all the HTTP headers but you might be wondering how do you actually set them. Uh, now in Node.js the way you set them is with response.writehead. So when we have the HTTP server with rec and res objects you can write res.writehead and this sets the HTTP header and you can see an example here response.writehead. Now 200 here the first parameter is the error code or the, sorry, the HTTP response code, it's not always an error. And that's one of these numbers back here. And then the rest of it is just some more headers. Now we're not concerned with those yet, just yet. We'll explore those more in the next video. But the one that you want to look at right now is the first parameter, and that's just the HTTP code that you want to respond with, which more often than not will be 200. Now I hope you've understood that all okay and in the next video we'll explore MIME types which is a way to tell the browser what kind of content you're returning. Maybe it's text, maybe it's HTML, maybe it's JavaScript, maybe it's an image. The browser at the moment just has to take his best guess but we can tell it what we're returning with a MIME type and this is where some of the other HTTP headers will come in.